Welcome to the stream. How you doing? Glad to see you here. Today we're going to be doing Hankabonk Starting Point uh, Part 3. We already done two of these streams before. Uh, we're actually, the first stream we did uh, three machines. The second stream we did one machine. So we are now continuing on with the fifth machine in the Starting Point series, which is Explosion. I've already turned the machine on. I've already connected to the VPN. If you're unfamiliar with how to um, connect to the Hack the Box network and connect to the VPN to access the machines. Uh, check out my Hack the Box starting point part one video on YouTube and it shows you how to um, download your VPN and connect to it. So let's go ahead and dive right into it and go to task number one for explosion. So the first task is what does the three letter acronym RDP stand for? Uh, this is a very easy one. It stands for Remote Desktop Protocol. So, Remote Desktop Protocol. Submit answer, and that is correct. What is a three-letter acronym that refers to an to interaction with the host through a command line interface? So, the acronym for command line interface is CLI. Submit answer, correct. What about graphical user interface interactions? Uh, so graphical inter user interface uh, acronym is GUI, G-U-I. What is the name of an old remote access tool that came without encryption by default and listens on TCP port 23? So this is Telnet, T-E-L-N-E-T. -E this machine is so easy. Um, right now but uh oh i forgot to mention that redeemer is actually the first uh starting point machine in the series that requires vip access so this is not a free machine so if you uh don't have vip access you need to pay um for a hide the box subscription to access this the the first four machines were free for everybody but starting with uh Explosion you need to pay for VIP access on Hide the Box. What is the name of the service? What is the name of the service running on port 3389 TCP? Um, we're just gonna have to scan it and find out. I mean, 3389, that's It should be it's some flavor RDP, but let's let's find out what it is for sure. So let's do a nmap. We'll do a sudo nmap um, dash s uh, yeah dash s capital s dash p three three eight nine. And then we will do dash S capital V for service version. And then we will do uh, the IP address of the target. So to get that, we just go back to our Actibox dashboard and click this here, the machine IP address. It automatically copies our clipboard and then we can uh, paste it. And this, actually let's do a ST on this. It's not gonna make much, much of a difference, but a T is a full connection, so we're gonna get a better, better results, I guess, with this. Type in your password, hit enter, and we should get some results here shortly. So, so here we go. MSWBT server. which is a version, um, a type of RDP. So we'll just paste that in here, ms dash, right here, ms dash wbt dash server, submit answer. Task six, what is the switch used to specify the target host IP address when using X-Free RDP? I think it's dash, that's a good question. 
I don't have these memorized. Um, because you don't have to memorize things. So I'm gonna go to my GitHub, and I have all kinds of notes here. So this is my GitHub, and if you just search in my GitHub here for X free RDP, we're gonna get a bunch of results, but you'll see the syntax right here. And it's slash V colon. So you can see the, um, what's the name in here? So this is this is just an example here. I actually have this many times because I use X free X free RDP all the time, but I never remember the flags because I never really found it useful to memorize flags because I can just write the stuff in my notes and I can access my notes anytime. So um, right here, it's forward slash V colon, and that's the answer. So we'll go back to our Hackerbox dashboard and we will paste that. So once again, forward slash V colon, that should be the answer. Correct. What username successfully returns a desktop projection to us with a blank password? What username successfully returns a desktop projection to us with a blank password? Desktop projection. So let's go ahead and do with a blank password. What username successfully returns a desktop projection to us with a blank password? So we need to figure out, we need to figure this out. Um, let's go back to our terminal here. We will clear this out and we will do a Hydra. So we have, let's go back to my GitHub notes. We'll type in, we'll go back to my, so if you go to my hacking notes here, scroll down to Hydra. Where is it at? There it is, Hydra. And then we want to do RDP. We don't have an RDP. Can you? RDP is not in here, but we can probably figure it out like this. So, oh, let's not do FTP. Let's do click on SSH. So we're just we're gonna run the same command right here, but instead of SSH at the end, we're just gonna do this RDP and see if that works for us. I'm thinking it will, but I don't know. I've never actually, I don't think I've ever used Hydra for RDP. Let's do a uh, dash H on this. I think you sh we should be able to do this on RDP. I, I, I can't imagine why you couldn't. Let's look here. What does it say? Let's do man Hydra. To quit, let's do man hydra grep RDP. RDP looks like it's an option, so let's go ahead and let's go clear this out and we'll paste that command. So, so like I said, instead of SSH here, we're going to do RDP. So, back this up and RDP and then username. We don't know the username, remember it. Um, it's we're trying to figure out what the username is, but we know it's a blank password. So because we know it's a blank password, we're going to change this to a lowercase p because capital K, capital P means we're doing a word list and we're not using a word list on the password because we already know the password. We know the password is blank. So we do a dash P and we'll just do um, quotation marks, which means blank password. And then this time, um, we don't know the username. So you would do a dash lowercase L if you know the username, but we don't know the username. username so we're doing a dash capital L and for the username um, we got to specify a word list so for the word list it's slash user slash share and I think oh that's a lot you just user share word list I think it's in Metasploit and then after Metasploit, it's like Unix users.txt. Yeah. So I'll use this word list. I'm not sure what word list is going to work because this is actually kind of a smaller word list. But we're going to try this off the rip. So, um, and then we got to specify, specify the target IP address. So we'll get rid of that there. And let's go ahead and copy our IP address. Scroll up here. Oh, that's it. 
click the copy and then we will paste the IP address there and that should be all we need to try to find a username or log in with a user with a blank password assuming that the user is in this unix underscore users at txt so once again the, the command is hydra dash capital well and then the uh the path of your username list in my case and this is actually default in Kali linux um it's forward slash user slash share slash word list slash metasploit slash unix underscore users at txt and it's dash lower case p and then space and then uh, double quotes or you can use single quotes too but just do uh, two quotes for a blank password your target IP address will be different for you and then the protocol that we're attacking which is RDP and I think that should that should do something no we're wrong zero valid passwords found hmm I don't think I've ever used maybe I have used Hydra of RDP I'm not we just gotta figure out the username. So let's go down back to the task. What username successfully returns a desktop projection to us with a blank password? Oh, you know what? I got an idea. Let's try this. It's actually easier than I thought it was. Let's try this. Let's do x free RDP and then slash u for user. Um, and you can see I use this command already for like when I connect the offsite labs. Um, so we'll do, I'm just gonna type this in slash p lab slash b. All right, so the username I have a hunch that it's administrator because the administrator account is on every single uh Windows machine, so it's always a good guess. Administrator, and I spell right? Administrator, yes. The password is blank, so we're just gonna do, we're just gonna do that. Actually, let's not, let's try this first, and then if that doesn't work, we'll just get rid of the slash P. And then for the slash V colon, this is where our target IP address is. Um, so we'll click the copy, and we will paste our IP address here. This should work. Maybe. All right. So it says, "Do you trust us above certificate?" We'll do Y for yes, and this should work. This should lock. Assuming that as administrator is the username, which it, I, I have good confidence. Yep. Look at that. Um, we hit no on this, and we can actually close this. So this is uh, X. This is X free RDP. This is us basically logging into the Windows machine remotely with a GUI graphical user interface. Um, this is the target machine and you can see we got a flag right here um, X3 RDP is a great tool for logging in uh, to one of those machines remotely So let's actually just copy this. So here's our flag. This flag will be different for you when you run through this but That is my flag uh, Let's go ahead and scroll down so We figured out the username was uh, administrator capital A Submit answer. Success and submit the root flag. Super easy. Uh, once again, to get the root flag, it, you, it's all already on the desktop of the administrator. So double click the flag and then you'll see the flag here. And you can copy this and you can go back to your Hackamox dashboard and paste it here and submit the flag. And that should be it. Done. Explosion has been pwned. Yeah, that sounded really bad. My VM is lagging quite a bit. Look at that, baby. Explosion has been pwned. Hit okay, OK. I think it automatically shuts down. It did. So we can actually go to the next machine, which is pre ignition. And I don't know why it always jumps me way down. Very unfortunate. Just click spawn machine and we'll spawn a new machine. 
So while that's starting up, we'll read task one. Directory brute forcing is a technique used to check a lot of paths on a web server to find hidden pages. Which is another name for this? I, or one, local file inclusion, two, dir busing, three, hash cracking. This is very easy. Um, it's dir busting. So the answer for task one is dir busting. Local file inclusion is not even related to this and neither is hack crack hash cracking. Completely unrelated. These are legitimate um, hacking terms, local file inclusion and hash cracking, but um, not related to directory brute forcing at all. So, um, dir busting is the right answer. So, dir busting. And D dir busting is just short for directory busting. We can submit that. And there's actually multiple tools so uh, dir buster is a command or a tool that you can use and then another one is derb d-i-r-b um they do basically the same thing a little bit differently a little bit different speeds but they do the the same thing in the in the end task two what switch do we use for idmap scan to specify that we want to perform version detection we actually ran this flag uh on the last machine with idmap um and it's dash uh, lowercase s, capital V, semantic answer. What does MAP report? Is the service identified as running on port 80 TCP? So we're going to have to run a uh, MAP scan to get this. I have a hunch that it's HTTP. I'm actually going to type that in now. HTTP. And submit that because that's typically what's running on 480. Well, let's go ahead and run the the, the MF scan anyways, just to prove to you um, that it, you know that's what it actually is, and to show you how to find that out. Uh, let's go ahead and clear this out, and we will. Damn Healer J, welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping. In. How you doing today? Hi, I want to offer promotion on your channel, viewers, followers. Um, thanks for stopping in, Damned Healer. I appreciate the offer, um, but I am not interested um, in your promotion, uh, unfortunately. But I do appreciate you coming here and checking out the channel. All right, so the name not the name, but the nmap scan. <laughs> we'll do a sudo nmap. We'll do a s dash s capital s dash lower case s capital v for a ser service version. And then we will do dash p for port 80. And then we will do the IP address. I don't want that. So we'll scroll back up and grab our IP address. And we will paste it in our from our clipboard and hit enter on this. And this is just gonna run a uh, port scan on just 80. We're gonna get the service version and um, the screen on top is gonna give us. So we have service here, HTTP, and then we have a version uh, Nginx 1.14.2. Um, so yeah, right there. That was the answer to the last one, so we can go on to the next task. What server name and version of service is running on port 80 slash TTP? So we just found that out uh, right here is the correct answer. Copy this and we will paste it here. So task four, nginx space 1.14.2 to my answer. Done. What switch do we use to specify to go bus where we want to perform dir busing specifically? I'm pretty sure the switch is just DIR. I'm pretty sure it's just the, the like, it's just DIR. Yep, that's right. Looks like we're gonna have to run some GoBuster, but let's go to the next task. When using GoBuster to Durbus, what switch do we have to make sure it finds PHP pages? That I do not know. So let's go ahead and open up 
Dr. Buster dash H. Uh, File extension list, so it looks like it might be a dash E. Number of threads, don't parse, don't recursive. It looks like it's dash E. So it's going to be dash E PHP. And it looks like it's the right answer. That's incorrect. All right, I was wrong there. When using your buster, what switch do we add to make sure it finds PHP pages? So it's not dash E. Uh, so I was thinking file extension list. Start point. Hmm. When using find PHP pages. Let's do a man. Or Buster. There's no man page for Durbuster. Wild. Dash L. Word list to use, the so word list, okay, we don't want it. Only use get requests. Huh. When using Durbuster, what should we add to make sure it finds PHP pages? I'm just I'm not really sure on this let's go ahead and click the hint look at the GoBuster help page and think about what extension is most common for PHP pages I am on the Durbuster help page what extension is the most common I did dash E file extension list oh you know what maybe we have to do ASP maybe and think about what extension is most common for PHP pages maybe it is ASP I thought I was thinking, I was thinking it's, it was PHP so dash E we were starting on that looks like and I think we were just wrong on the file extension so I think it's dash E ASP no huh what Look at the GoBuster help page, all right, and think about what extension is most most common for PHP pages. That is let's do Durbuster dash dash help. Is that an option? Same thing. Hmm. I don't see it being anything other than dash E. Dash H, okay, obviously it's not that. Dash capital H. Headless mode. Report, no, we don't want headless mode. Wordless, that doesn't help us. Only use get requests. No. Number of threads. It doesn't change anything. Start point. It doesn't help. 
verbose output doesn't help. Don't parse HTML. Not right. I don't know about this. Huh. I don't see why it's on dash E PHP. Yeah, that's not right. Well, let's go ahead and Google it. Let's do Dir Buster flag uh, buttons. This is in the Kali Linux documentation. This is what I was just looking at. So it doesn't really help me. Go back. When using GoBuster to third bus, what switch do we need to make sure it finds PHP pages? Well, let's just try all the, let's just try them all. Uh, all the flags, I guess. What is brute forces? <laughs> Let's try dash B for verbose. It's all right. This is wild. This is. Let's go ahead and just Google this exact question here. Hopefully, it doesn't give me a write up for this. Yeah, I don't want to go in someone else's. I don't want to go into someone else's hide the box right up, but we'll see if this helps us. This is Go Buster, this isn't even Dur Buster. You know what? <laughs> I see what I'm doing wrong, guys. I get it now. When using Go Buster, I'm sitting there trying to do the help page on Dur Buster. I was so yeah. Let's do uh, Go Buster. I wonder why I gave us Go Buster when I Google search that. Go Busters. Is Go Buster not installed? Go Buster is not installed in Kali Linux by default. So let's go ahead and just, we should be able to install it this way. Just we'll run Go Buster and it should be, yeah, uh, so install. We'll do yes. So we'll just install it real quick. I'm sitting here thinking that, I'm like, well, I don't understand why I don't see any of these extensions in the help page because we're in the wrong tool. So now let's do Go Buster uh, dash H and let's look at this. <laughs> Flags. Did they? Were not they talking about Durbuster earlier? Oh no, I, I lost my mind. I thought they were talking about Durbuster earlier. That's my apologies. And you're on the wrong tool. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do man uh, go buster. 
Does Gullbuster not have a man page either? Oh, you know what? I think we have to do this. Go Buster DIR dash H. Is that right? Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, okay, right here. Dash X, extension string. File extensions to search for. There we go. So it's dash X PHP. Success! What page is found during our dirt busting activities? Alright, well, let's go ahead and figure it out. So we'll run GoBuster DIR um, Actually, I'm going to introduce you guys to a new tool. We're going to do a little bit differently than what um, we're being tired. Just because I personally believe that this is a the better, the best um, directory fuzzer that you can have, and it is uh, Ferox Buster. It's my personal favorite, and this is the command that you would run. So it's Ferox Buster dash dash URL, the URL that you're trying to brute force. So in this case, we're just going to do HTTP colon slash slash and then IP address of our target. So we'll delete all of this because that's not the IP address for our target. Um, and we'll scroll up. Back here. And we will paste IP address dash W for wordless and then we'll specify this wordless. I like to use derb uh, big.txt just because it's such a it's such a large word list that um, it catches it catches a lot of things. And uh, Ferox Buster is a lot faster than um, Dur Buster, Dur, Go Buster. It's faster than all of them. Um, if I had to rate them, I would say Dur is probably the slowest. Maybe Dur Buster. But Go Buster is actually um, quicker than Dur and Dur Buster. And then Ferox Buster, like, in my opinion, is just way faster than, than all of them. And then it, it, it puts it in a nice neat format as you can see down here it just looks nicer in my opinion let's we'll see what happens here we're uh as you see we've already scanned like almost all of this we might be using the wrong word list is it really not gonna find anything Hmm. I found one. What did I find? Well, let's try a different word list then. Uh, wordless. Derb. Let's try Durbuster's word list, I guess. Durbuster slash. Eh. Director list. We'll do director list. Um, 1.1. We'll just try this one. See if that works. This is actually, this is a bigger word list. Oh, this one's way bigger. This is a much larger word list. We should, we should catch something here, hopefully. I'm open. Oh, you know what? I just, th I just thought of something. If it's a PHP page, we probably do have to use the Go Buster or the PHP flag because maybe Frost Buster doesn't have that option because they told us to do that option. Well, we learned something today. But you have to actually specify dash X. Well, we should still find it without the dash X, I'd imagine. 
I don't know. Let's go ahead and uh, right click, split hor terminal horizontally. We'll zoom back in here so you can see this better. Same thing here. Let's do go buster dash dir. Um, it's not dash dir, it's just dir. How does this command run? Flag. So we, we I guess we gotta do dash x php and then the target I guess http colon slash slash I don't appear and copy this IP address here copy selection paste it down here and that should start oh we didn't specify a word list required URL URL also so URL oh URL has to go in front here, so URL and then the URL obviously and then word list. Word list. And then for the word list we'll just do user share word list term. And then we'll just do We'll just do common txt. I'm not expecting this to be like crazy, so we'll just try that. Power flights, URL wordless. I think we have to do dash wordless and dash URL. What am I doing wrong? Error on parsing argument. Wordless file ordless does not exist. What do you mean? Oh. So the flag is not dash wordless, it's dash w. There we go. Okay, we did something wrong again. Error running go bus. I'm able to connect to no such hopes. How's there no such hopes? Thing is just dash u. There we go. It's not dash URL, it's dash u. And this should hopefully find some. We got two <laughs> third passing tool. There we go. Admin.php. It found admin.php, so that's probably the answer. Admin.php. It's my answer. That took way longer than that should have, but I did introduce you guys to a new tool. Even though it didn't work in this case, it actually works a lot better than Go Buster, in my opinion. But I guess in this case, it didn't because I guess we're not looking for PHP in this, or maybe it'll find it. I can't believe that doesn't pop up for for our special. That's wild to me. What is the HTTP status code reported by Go Buster for the discovered page? So we'll go back. Status code was 200, right? As you can see right here, status 200. And status 200, if you're not familiar with HTTP status codes, 200 just means um, success. So status 200 is good. Submit the root flag. Well, I imagine if we just navigate here, we'll we'll get the root flag. I'm like I'm I'm guessing. So we'll just do we'll copy this on our clipboard, copy selection, and then we'll open up a new tab in our internet browser. Uh, we'll do HTTP colon slash slash IP address as you can see right here on the top and then we'll do slash admin dot PHP and hopefully that gives us a flag um, username start root and password I'll see it. let's try admin and admin 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 works. Heck yeah, baby. Congratulations, your flag is boom. 
So, once you get to the page, remember that password is admin admin. Go back to our Hunterbox dashboard and we will submit this flag. And that is a done deal. Pre-ignition has been pwned. That's crazy because pre-ignition came after the explosion. Very strange. Pre-ignition should have came before explosion. I'm just saying. <laughs> Hit OK on this and we'll uh, go to the next one. Uh, Mon God. Click this and we will spawn the machine. And we can actually close out of these tools while we're waiting for that. So we're just too clear on this. Clear on this. Actually, we'll just do exit. There we go. Task one. How many TCB ports are open on the machine? All right, well, let's do a rust scan. Dash A, we don't know the IP address yet because it's still spawning, so we'll just do dash R, 1 through 65,535, that's every single port, and then we'll paste the IP address here once we get it. It's taking a while to spawn. This is the longest starting point spawn I've seen so far. Usually they come pretty, pretty fast, but not. Mon God. Sorry, refreshing the page. Maybe it did spawn. Sometimes Hydrobox does that where it says it's creating the instance when I actually already created it. So that's a good refresh. It helps it. Yeah, see it spawned up here. Scroll back down. There we go. We got an IP address. So we'll click this and copy it our clipboard. Thank you, Jack from Hydrobox Labs. I appreciate your help. But we are. We're busy right now. So we'll paste this. So once again, the command is Ruskin A and then the IP address dash R and then this. Now you can do it in Map Scan. In Map Scan is going to take way longer, um, which is why I'm using Ruskin because Ruskin Scan is way faster. If you're not entirely sure how to install Ruskin, check out my last video um, in the Hack the Box Starting Point series. It's the Hack the Box Starting Point. Uh, part two, where we did Redeemer, hacker and man. I showed you guys how to install. the most powerful hacker of all time. Follow me. Band Aid Candy, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. Thanks for stopping in. Glad to see you here. Hopefully, you're having a terrific day. Thank you so much for following the channel. Thanks for your support. Let's go ahead and run this. I like using Run Scan for fast scans over in Map Scan, so that's why we're running Run Scan. If you don't want to install Rust Scan or you don't know how to do it, you can do it in Map Scan. It is going to take way longer. Um, I highly recommend to research on how to install Rust Scan. If you don't know how to do it, like I said, in my last video, I have um, a tutorial on how to do it. It's uh, towards the beginning of the video. <clears throat> so we have two ports open 22 and um, 27017. So, let's look here. How many ports? Or two. 
One downfall of Rust is it's sometimes so fast that it misses ports. In this case, it didn't miss any ports because two is a correct answer. But just note that sometimes Rust can, can be incorrect because it's so fast. Maxi, thanks for stopping in. Glad to see you here. How you doing today? Comment to save the stream and watch back. Well, thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right, let's go to the next one. The next one is, which service is running on port 27017 of the remote host? All right, so this is what we're gonna use nmap for. So uh, we'll do sudo nmap dash uh, s, lower, lowercase s, capital T, dash, lowercase s, capital V. Post it on link, LinkedIn, I'll search you tonight and add. What do you mean? I'm not sure what you mean. What do you mean to post on LinkedIn? Dash P and then the port is, I guess we can copy it from our terminal because right here, 227017, copy this, paste that, and then the IP address. So we need to scroll up and get our IP address again. Click that. And we'll. So this is going to be the MMAP scan here. sudo MMAP dash lower S capital T space dash lower S capital V space dash lower p the port number which is in this case is 27017 and then your ip address of your target push in on this type in your password and we got mongodb 3.6.8 so we're just going to copy this and we'll paste it right here. And that's the answer. Which service is running on port 27017 on the remote host? The answer is MongoDB 3.6.8. What type of database is MongoDB? Choose SQL or NoSQL? Um, well, judging by the number of asterisks here, the answer is no SQL. So, MongoDB is no SQL. N O S Q L. And if we didn't get those asterisks, the way we can figure that out, we could just. If this is just a quick Google search, so we can just like um, look for one of these tabs here. We'll just type in MongoDB. MongoDB. And you can see right here. It's on Google. I'll we'll zoom in. MongoDB is a source available cross platform documented database program classified as a NoSQL database program. So, keyword NoSQL. Or NoSQL, however you want to say it. I like to say SQL. Don't at me if you're, if you're on the <laughs> team that doesn't like to say SQL. I like to say it. What is the command? Name for the Mongo shell that is installed with the MongoDB client package. What is the command name for the Mongo shell that is installed with the MongoDB client package? Oh, I don't know. Mongo. Huh. I'm not sure what that is. Name of the command name for the Mongo shell. Let's just Google that. Name of command for Mongo shell. Mongo or Mongo sh. So that looks like it's. Or, oh no, I think it's just Mongo. 
Do I share a dashboard? Yeah, it's just Mongo. M O N G O. Mongo! So, my answer that's correct. What does the command use for listing all the databases present on the Mongo server? No need to include a trailing. What does the command use to install all the databases present on the Mongo server? Oh, we'll just Google how to list all databases in MongoDB. Not GB, MongoDB. The use the show DBS command. So that should be the answer. Show DBS. What does the command use for listing out the collections in a database? No need to include a trailing. Show out the collections? Probably show collections, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess. Show collections. That's correct. Task seven. What is the command used for dumping the content of all the documents within the collection name flag in a format that is easy to read? What is the command for dumping the content of all the documents within a collection? Hmm, interesting. That's a little longer of a... So let's go ahead and log into this. LS. I don't need to do LS. Let's clear this out. So the... Mongo and is this even installed? It's not. Mongo's not even installed on Kai Linux by default. This is the newest version of Kai Linux, by the way. So we'll install Mongo real quick by doing Mongo and then push what Y to enter and then they'll download it. Hopefully the internet speed is quick like mine and it doesn't take you too long to download it. Alright, let's go ahead and clear Mongo. Should be is there like do we just do like mongo ip address maybe mongo options database address we should be able to just do mongo ip address i'm assuming let's try that out So it's Mongo IP address is what I'm gonna try. Not sure if it's gonna work. Looks like it's doing something. Let's try to help. There we go. So it looks like we logged in. So can we do like show collections? Show users? Hmm. Did we log in? Access controls on veil. Oh, the Mongo show has been superseded by Mongo SH. Interesting. So there's a new version of Welcome to Mongo DB, DB show. Well, can we do show? DBS. So, can we just like use admin? All these are empty. They all have zero gigabytes of information. Well, let's check out sensitive information. So we'll do use sensitive. You can see right here. This is one of the databases. Sensitive information show collection flag okay so the flag is right here um, now we need to do let's do help uh, show prints out the latest segment of the log so was default list objects in the collection 
because everything fighting now. What is the command used for dumping the content of all the documents within the collection name flag in a format that is easy to read? Well, let's do db dot dot help parentheses close parentheses. Let's see. Oh, that's way too much information. I did not expect that much help. <laughs> uh, let's try something else here. Let's do. Oh, let's try this. I used MongoDB before, believe it or not. Never had to do it. DB. The name of the flag is. Is that it? Oh, there we go. That's the flag. So, is this the answer for that task then? This is our flag, but I don't know if we. See. What comes after flag? So we did we did db.flag.find db.flag.find and there's some dot something else after find is what asking for what is the command used for dumping the contents of all the documents then in a format check the hint here we're gonna go search or refer to this blog post about the basic what do you mean this blog post you don't even give me a link to a blog post about the basic mongodb commands Let's try MongoDB campaigns. I think it's I'm I'm almost positive like we We're almost there. I just this is the last part of this command. I mean I got the flag, I don't see why. Okay. Uh user There's too many commands. Look at all these commands. Dot document? Yes, no. Collection name flag. We're gonna Google search or refer to this blog post about basic MongoDB commands. Oh man. Let's try. MongoDB commands.
basic monitor DB command. Let's see it. Let's check this out. This is the one we just did, db.collectionName.find, that's what I just did, collectionName.update, that's not it, save document, delete document, I don't want to do that, what the heck? In a format that's easy to read. Maybe it's dumb? Dot dumb? I don't know. Oh, here we go. So it's fine dot pretty. So this should be our answer. That's what I was looking for. So let's do up arrow key fine dot p r e t t y parentheses. Is that right? Yeah. So it's what we had. So it's db dot flag as you can see right here. db dot flag dot fine parentheses close parentheses dot pretty parentheses footprint and that comes out pretty even though it looks exactly the same to me <laughs> I mean I guess if there was more information in there like a lot more information that would actually look better but in this case it doesn't really look like it does as much but if there's more information in this collection then the pretty the dot pretty would make a lot more sense so um kind of glad they forced me to use the dot pretty learn something Go ahead and copy this flag. Well, let's go ahead and copy this command first. db.flag.find, parentheses, close parentheses, dot pretty, parentheses, close parentheses. Copy this. And go back to our active box dashboard. And this should work. Success. And then let's go ahead and copy our flag. Copy flag. And paste flag. Submit flag. Boom! Manga has been honed! And that is... That is done! And we have one more for the Tier 0 machine, Synced. But there's not enough time in this stream because we are over the hour. I try to keep these under an hour, but we went like a few minutes over. Which is okay, because we got three machines knocked out this stream. Last week we only had one, so improvement here. We, we knocked out um, quite a bit of the starting point machines in this stream. So that's good. Um, to recap, we did um, Mongon, Pregnition, and Explosion. So these three right here. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and wrap it up. So if you um, if you haven't signed up for Hide the Box, I highly recommend it, guys. It's a great platform to level up your cybersecurity cyber skills that employers are looking for. I do have affiliate links down in the channel description. Check them out. It's not a product the box. It does help support the channel if you uh, subscribe for a year subscription to Hack the Box or Hack the Box Academy. Highly recommend. I love Hack the Box. It's a great platform. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you next week and we will continue on um, with our hacking journeys. Peace out. Let's go ahead and close the music off.
Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out. Take care. Have a good one. Kaiser.